Sustainable fishing is crucial, but it comes with its challenges. We spent seven years to get the certification, and when we did the first time, we failed. Scientists, industry, NGOs, and of course, fishers don't always agree on what being sustainable means. Usually the fishers, they say we are asking too much, and usually the NGOs, they say we are not asking enough, and we are the objective uh, of the criticism of <laughs> most of the people, industry, NGOs. To be sustainable is a, a decision. You can decide to do it, or you can decide to don't do it. Of course, to do it is more expensive, but it's the only way. But there is agreement on one thing. The failure to act sustainably is prohibitively expensive for the planet. If we really want to solve things in the water, we need to work with the guys that are mainly creating the impact. Doing things better is in, is in the human being natural. So all of us, we want to do things better. Choosing a sustainable path is up to us. But can we afford not to? I got into sustainability because I love wildlife. I love uh, sailing, I love diving. This is Alberto Martin, Senior Fisheries Program Manager at sustainable fishing NGO, the Marine Stewardship Council, or MSC. I enjoy working for something that I, that I believe that I am making an impact or making things better in the world. The MSC uses science and fishery best practice to set a standard for sustainable fishing. It requires the meeting of three principles. Are fishers leaving enough adults to breed and sustain fit and healthy populations? Are they minimizing their environmental impact sufficiently? And are fisheries observing local and global rules and regulations to ensure they are well managed and sustainable? It's not easy to reach the bar that MSC established for a sustainable certified fishery. And an example of this journey can be a Chevasta fishery. It's not an option not to be a sustainable company. We want to continue with our business for a long term. This is Kepa Echevarria, CEO of Spanish fishing company Echevasta. A Spanish fishing company that catch tuna from two generations ago in the Indian Ocean. They work with the government of Seychelles and other coastal and small island developing states to promote sustainable industrial tuna fisheries in the Indian Ocean. We know that in future, it will matter much more than today. The stocks are under pressure and we need to have certification that will allow the, the fishing companies to do business in a more sustainable manner and in a more profitable manner. Fisheries, like Echevaster, approach independent auditors to assess them against the MSC standard. Our organization is interested in bringing to the program more and more fisheries to get a better behavior in the water and to get a more sustainable food for the consumers. But if we ourselves uh, audit those fisheries, there is a clear conflict of interest. The auditors, known as conformity assessment bodies, or CABs, are not the only organizations that can influence whether a fishery is deemed sustainable. MSC pushes for any other stakeholders to take part in the full assessment. Stakeholders in a full assessment process are everyone that has an interest in that fishery. It can be scientists, it can also be NGOs, and it can be even a competitor. If they don't agree with the result of the full assessment, they can submit an objection. It needs to be a participated process. We had objection from uh three NGOs. Jose Luis Jauregui is head of sustainability at Echevaster. One of them was related with the harvest control rules. A harvest control rule is like a set of instructions that ensures the right amount of fish is caught each year so that the stock has a chance to recover and grow. Unfortunately for Echevaster, at the time of their assessment, the region's management body had not agreed harvest control rules. And that was the reason why we failed in the first attempt of a certification. We didn't understand very well what means MSC and the rules of MSC. 
and we didn't have a teacher. When I first met Kepa and Jose Luis, was probably one of the most tense meetings I've ever had. They were just in the middle of a super complicated objection process. There was a possibility for them to lose the certification for the second time in a second objection. This time, the objection centered around fish aggregating devices, or FADs. Fishers understand that floating objects are the lunch canteen for ocean predators. The fat make a little shadow in the water and is attracting these little fish. And after, the tuna is starting to come. These are nature's fads. Fishers use this natural behavior and make their own fads to capture tuna. But there are problems with these. The materials they are made of are not wholly biodegradable, and they may also come with hanging nets. Fats are controversial because together with the target species, you are fishing non-target species. A variety of marine life, including other species of tuna, and endangered, threatened, and protected species such as rays and sharks, also come to prey on the smaller fish under the fads. These non-target species may also get caught as unwanted catch in the same nets used to target tuna. It's easy to understand that uh, Many NGOs and stakeholders were a bit concerned how we can uh, demonstrate that the fat fishery is sustainable. So it was um, a complicated moment for them, a complicated moment also for us, being honest, because there was a reputational issue on the MSC side. Never a fat fishery had been certified before. What is the NGO world going to say if a fat fishery gets certified? Eshivaster developed better management practices to help fish sustainably with fads. With the new devices we have on board, we have made a better decision when the presence of non-target species is too much, so we do not set the net. They have invested in technology to reduce their impact on ETP species and damage to the environment we are able to put back at sea non-target species alive. So we are reducing a lot the mortality of uh, this uh, species. And they are working towards creating fads that are more biodegradable to help reduce ocean plastic. Today we are far from the 100%, but uh, at least our company, we are proud to say that we are getting uh, a big percentage of uh, the materials using in fats, which are definitely non-entangling and uh, biodegradable. They went for the second time to an objection. The first time a fishery had to face two different objections in two different full assessment, but finally they got the certification. It was a pure challenge. There were something like uh, 10 years or 12 years of hard time, but now we are happy because we got it. People really didn't believe that fishing on fats could be done in a sustainable way. And Echevasta demonstrated that it properly done, they can minimize impacts and they can be sustainable. And now they are considered a sustainable fishery and uh, they are certified and they've been certified for a few years. But the story doesn't end there. They also engage into a huge commitment of improvement a condition that the fishery needs to fulfill when in a specific indicator they have not reached yet the best practice level. We are working with different organizations to work together just to find the solutions. They have to make an action in order to improve their fishing practices to reach this best practice level. Because that is the engine we use to make certified fisheries improve. So it's not that they get the certification and that's it. It's that when they get the certification, they get also a huge engagement to improve those indicators that are not reaching the best practice levels. All our data, all our catches are public. We have been engaged in projects with the ETP species. We are now engaged in a project uh, in, in how the fats uh, are affecting the, the coral communities. And that new information is helping other fisheries also to better manage their fats, to better manage the way they are fishing. 
the world needs certified fat fisheries because otherwise there will not be the pressure they are feeling now on improving those practices. And I think that is having a worldwide impact, really. For me, that's the legacy from Echevar Star. After 20 years, we continue with the business, so I'm very proud for that. When a company like Echevasta is, is uh, changing or adapting its, its fishing methods, improving the quality of the storage on their vessels, aiming for high grade and high quality fish, it makes me happier because it gives a better reputation to Seychelles. We want to create a better world for of kids around and our families. At the end of the day, we are we are doing something very positive for sustainability.